Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan had moved forward to put me away. I drifted so far. Would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time. But Jesus appeared and said, this one is mine. Now I'm safe from all harm. For he walked through the storm when he came looking for me. Hello and welcome to Addiction Free. I'm your host, Evangelist Candy Rose. And as you can tell from the background, I am at Tommy and Latrice Thomas's studio here in Bedford, Texas. And uh, he, Tommy has arranged for me to interview some people. And today I get to in interview Lynn Wilkerson Arterberry. And actually it was Carrie Farr. Uh, who has a TV show, also, who referred me to her. And I'm so glad, Lynn, that I got to interview you today. <laughs> oh, wonderful. He Thank said you, you so have much. an amazing testimony of what God has done in your life, that an addiction-free testimony of what Jesus has done. And so, you know, every week I bring you these shows because I want you to hear the devastation, but then the restoration. Yeah. Share your heart, what God has done, what where did he brought you from? What what happened? Maybe as you were growing up or in your younger years, did you end up in some heartache? Well, I was raised as a preacher's daughter, and okay. I was raised in Florida and uh, had a, a fabulous, I still do, fabulous family. Um, so there are no complaints there. I'm just really grateful to have been raised in a good home. Oh, that's good. We had a beautiful uh, church family and all, yet I got kind of caught up in uh, a babysitting job one night and decided to uh, check out their cabinets and see if there was any um, anything to eat in the cupboards. Has anybody ever done that? <laughs> and uh, I found alcohol, and uh, there was just so much of it in different colors, and so I just remember how fun they were always, uh, the people that I was babysitting for were always so happy and fun and, you know, going to parties. And I thought, wow, I'm going to check out what they're drinking. All I remember is that people were trying to get in their home. They were beating on the, in the dining area, they were beating on the windows. And, uh, of course, I, I was on the ground and I had gotten up and I was frightened because I didn't know where I was and I didn't realize until later that that was actually considered a blackout. Mm -hmm. And uh, that became uh, a way of life of as far as the blackout type of drinking. Hiding out and not uh, wanting anybody to know what I did or thought and I had some weird thoughts. Uh, I had a lot of strange thoughts about me that I didn't belong and I shouldn't be here and I would always identity feel, crisis yes okay yes. so that's what's happening in a lot of people's lives yes and yes that's why they yes. end up because of the insecurities that's why a lot of times they end up do drinking and doing drugs then my father would call me up and and offer some sort of different kind of plan for me as a single mom and so I I was able to have an opportunity to go with different uh organizations, you know, the Teen Challenge situation. So you, I had the, you went in to, to some of those? I, I had very uh, close family members that had started that program, and we were, um, I was asked to come down to Lindale, and at the time, where they were at, and stayed in um, and how long was one you of their there? homes. I was there for two months. And you left? And I left. Okay, so um, you didn't give God a chance. <laughs> no, I really was going to. <laughs> it's like I always had these conditions. I don't know if I really am, am, am able to stand up to this thing called, you know, Christianity and live a life that's pure and, and whole and, and, you know, sober. I mean, I didn't see that that was really possible for me, but I learned to be an actress and I tried to participate in my life. Uh, with those around me, and I, I kind of got too good at that. And playing church, 
but yes. my yeah my family knew they always knew yeah. um, I felt a certain distance from them I tried to stay away from them <laughs> throughout my life uh, now I really wish that I would have been at every holiday, but I wasn't for yeah. years. Well, how and when did you change and have the transformation? Uh, the final thing that really turned me around was is that I was uh, watching some odd thing on TV and ended up being so sick of myself that I turned it off and up pops the uh, one of the religious stations and it had uh, this gal talking about Jesus and how she had come to know him and how it had changed her life. And I thought, wow, wow. I mean, she was so beautiful. And I just I had to... I think it's okay to say this. It was 700 know, Club, right? It was 700 yes. Club, yeah. yes. I'm sure they yes. don't mind you saying that. Yes. Because At the time, I had never watched it. And yeah. so it was odd that it was on. Okay. Um, it was all a God deal, I know. Yes, it today. was a God deal. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is coincidence, not even you folks watching this right now and hearing, hearing her testimony. So go ahead. <laughs> the woman on the phone that answered my call, um, it's like she knew who I was and she knew who I was going to be. And she, oh. it was just that moment of prayer that made a difference in my life. Oh. And I don't know why it was then and not at some other point and in some other altar call or anything else. But it was that time and it was on God's time. Yes. I know so well today. And uh, through that particular um, conversion of my life, I remember saying to my boyfriend that I had moved in a year prior to that because I had given up on getting married and I had given up on men period but this one I was felt like I was kind of stuck with him at the time because he was the one who was in my life and I didn't feel like I should run away from him well interesting enough uh he asked me to marry him since he wouldn't he didn't want to move out he wanted to marry me <laughs> <laughs> so I I said yes. I mean, and I'm like, if God can change me, he can change him too. Aww, and it yes. kind of happened yeah. like that so Aww. quickly. So he got saved too. So he did too. Yay! And we is that who you're married to now? Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, that's that who I'm married to now. Awesome. Now, how long have you been living for the Lord now? Uh, 19 years. It was in Aww. 2001, a year after I got uh, in, into sobriety, and um, wow. that was 2001 that I made that phone call. Awesome. Things turned around so much for us that beginning year well, of being yeah. married. When you make a commitment to Christ, things do turn around, don't they? Yes. And we're going to come right back because I have made a commercial, 30-second little commercial, that uh, points people to a, a website that I made that uh, where they can find faith-based recovery. So we're going to come right back. And, and if you or someone you know uh, is looking for help, Believe me, folks, Jesus is the answer. Uh, I'm a former stripper and a prostitute, and when I totally gave my life to Christ, that's why I'm changed, and that's why I'm the person I am today. So tell your friends about this website. So we'll be right back. Addictions. Addictions of all types are killing precious people. Overdose of opioids is on the rise. Prescription drugs and alcohol cause families to be torn apart. Everyone suffers including the children, especially the children. If you or a loved one want help, go to addictionfaithprograms.com. There is hope. Tommy has uh, told me that Sherry has an amazing testimony that y'all need to hear. And so from what I understand, um, Sherry has been in uh, prison mm -hmm. uh, several times. And uh, you wouldn't know it to look at you now. Look at you, you beautiful lady. <laughs> Sherry, would you share with our viewers what uh, has happened and maybe how you kind of ended up and maybe where you end up in the wrong direction? Growing up young, my father was a Baptist minister. Wow. Uh, mother played the uh, piano and organ at church. Uh, all of our family members were Christians, churchgoers. But by the time I was uh, 13, uh, things had changed uh, in my life. Uh, my parents got a divorce. Uh, the, uh, we were all separated. My brother went with my father. I oh, stayed with my that mother. Was hard. And so, um, of course, I, I'm the one that got the attitude and uh, decided to... Uh, 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 
decided to start doing drugs. I started probably doing drugs when I was 15, 16. By the time I was 17, I was in drugs really hardcore. Yeah. Uh, so, um, 1978, uh, I got in some trouble in Houston. What'd you do? Um, it was probably um, check fraud, okay. forgery, check forgery. Um, I was sentenced to five years in prison. Wow. And I, ran, uh, I was introduced to some really uh, hardcore uh, outlaws uh, here in Fort Worth. A lot of people I knew died. Mm. Uh, there's not too many of us uh, left. Mm. Um, they all died in their addiction. Mm, sad. Yeah, it's real sad. It's real sad. Yes. And uh, I got new charges filed on me in uh, 1998. And uh, by 2000, I was sentenced to prison again. I was back up there on parole in the Tarrant County Jail. They didn't have a bond. And, uh, and the system filed... Uh, Habitual against oh, me. Oh, yeah, they'll do that after so many times. Yeah, after so many yeah. times. And, it's uh, like a revolving yeah. door. Yeah. So yeah. drugs, get back in there again. Yeah. So drugs, yeah. get back in there right. again. Right. Yeah, and all wasted mm. years. Huh? Yeah. It's You're a miracle you're alive. Yeah, yes, I am. Yes, yeah. I am, by the grace of God. Uh, so I was sitting up there in 2003, and um, I noticed a flyer that was being put in some Bible studies that uh, had an address on it. And I knew the address in the, uh, in the street, in the neighborhood. Anyway, and I get it from, the, uh, from one of the uh, inmates. Uh-huh. To the point where she finally told me, she said, I'm not going to give you this anymore. If you want to read one, you've got to get the Bible study. And, uh, and I told her, I said, well, okay, so I'd start looking for this. It, it was almost like this person, whenever she walks in to a cell block, it's light coming in. What, she was an inmate that was saved? No, no, no. A, a teacher. A Christian coming in there, doing a Bible study, doing a volunteer, Bible study. A volunteer. Okay, a volunteer, yes. And when she walks into a cell block in darkness, yes. there's actually light oh. that, around her. Oh. And so I introduced myself, and it was actually Latrice Thomas. Oh, Latrice. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so I started talking to her, and I sat up there 14 months that time waiting trial. Uh, looking at 25 to life. Wow. And uh, uh, and I started doing those Bible studies and a lot more and, uh, and got me a Bible. And it didn't take me long at all to where I was up every morning with my cup of coffee and had all my Bible studies out. Aww. And I was opening up and it had been so many years, and I had to go through so much pain, and uh, and just uh, and just. You were being healed. Yeah. The Holy Spirit yeah. was healing yeah. your broken heart. Right. All the hurts right. and everything that you'd been right. through, disappointments. Right. You know what? We're going to stop right here, and I'm going to ask Latrice to come and sit right here. And I'm going to let you two talk here just for a little bit. Oh, no. Yes, so don't go away. <laughs> Latrice? Okay. All right, now that we got L Latrice here, <laughs> because this is important, because Latrice, you and Tommy do uh, prison ministry. Mm -hmm. And this is how you even met this precious Sherry here. <laughs> Someone had been through all the hurts and all the time in prison. And uh, 
uh, I want you to just, uh, um, you two talk here for a minute about what happened here. Okay? Let me tell you. All right. <laughs> I go into that pond, and I don't think she, I don't know if she told you that she said that she would see, and she'd want to t come out and talk to us, but she'd go back in. She, she didn't want people to know that she even had a Bible. You know, she'd hide it. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. But uh, she finally came out, and we talked, and I can remember one of the girls saying, you know, she went back there in her her room one time and, and spread out all of these, what you have to do to be a Christian and all these confessions. We heard scream, we heard her screaming and crying <laughs> and, and said the guard didn't even mess with her because she was came to full repentance oh. and, and the Lord just filled her room. Oh, <laughs> Sherry. Oh, Sherry. Praise God. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. That is it awesome. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and that's why it's important. I do jail ministry and I love this story mm -hmm. because, yeah. you know, our lives affect each other. And now you go back into the prison. Yes, yes, she comes right? in. She okay, so now. tell yeah, about no. this now. Okay. Okay, so, um, so I went back to prison, uh, and uh, I was there, and Latrice would uh, mail me the Bible studies. And I told her, I said, Latrice, what do I do when I get home? <laughs> uh, because, I just, uh, because I just wasn't sure. And uh, she uh, gave me some church references and everything. And, uh, and I prayed to mamas, whenever I get off the bus, I see my elderly mother leaned up against the uh, bus station, and she's got a dozen red roses. Oh, <laughs> oh! When the uh, when the bus pulls Aww. into the parking lot, and I just put down my head and I went, "Oh, mama!" <laughs> you know? Oh. Uh, and I get off the bus and I take my dozen red roses and I put my mama in the car and we go to her house, and. Um, I didn't really know how to uh, how to do this. Because, you mean to live the life? Yeah, because okay. because I never had. Okay, you have to understand. Remember, I've been out right. there since I was right. fifteen years old. Right. And how old were you then? Now uh, I'm sixty five now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Look how, how far God's brought her. Yes. Yes. So. Um, uh, so I I just joined uh, uh, every group. That, Every Bible study that uh, that I could. Mm -hmm. Continue. Uh, I said in that front room. Mama always called that front room uh, Shirley's room, and I'm not real sure why, <laughs> but she did. And I'd sit there, and to keep from having to walk, to keep from walking out that front door. Uh, after Mother would go to bed at night, the devil just is just inking on you. You, you have to understand that uh, I, I was a woman with about 38 years of addiction. And in and out of prison. And, and hardcore. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, living with outlaws. And, uh, mm. uh, and it's all I knew was that I didn't want to go back there anymore. You know, uh, you have an alternative. And God gives you a choice. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, he called my he called me, and I heard his name. And uh, but Satan is Satan strong. He is. God's bigger. Yeah, but God is. Bigger. But God but is God, bigger. But God's bigger. Yes, he is. And I would just rebuke him and rebuke him and rebuke him and rebuke him and kick him uh, out of my room. And uh, whenever my, I'd get in the car and come back from Bible study, and instead of the steering wheels wanting to, that Satan's wanting to take me this way, and I'm going straight back to Mama's. All right. <laughs> That's being led by the Holy Spirit. That's what happens. Yeah. You know, uh, we're almost out of time, but, you know, okay. I wanted to, uh, you, now you go back into the prisons. And I you do. minister. It's a miracle. It's a miracle that I she's do. coming so, back. So yeah. tell about this very quickly here, and then we're going to lead our, right. our viewers to the Lord. Yeah. So please tell that, because this is important, because <laughs> this is what God wants to do in y'all's life. He wants to take what the enemy meant for bad and now use our lives to right. help somebody else. Right. Right. And that's what you're doing now. Right, right. Since 2012, I go back into the Tarrant County Jail, 
where I sit for 14 months, and I take the same Bible studies <laughs> back in there that I that I got from Latrice. <laughs> we do it together now. That's awesome. And, and, and it's awesome. Teamwork. And she, she gives her testimonies, yeah. and the girls are just oh. like, oh, oh. Wow. It yeah. gives them hope. Oh. It gives them hope. Yeah. If it can happen yeah. for her, yeah. it can yes. happen for them. Yeah. Yes. It's precious. All right, so what we're going to do, girls, is we have our viewers... Are are sitting there and they're and they're thinking I don't, I don't know if I can live that life, and you know I've I've done too much and and uh, been so bad or whatever God won't even want me. Well, for those of you who don't know, I'm a former stripper and a prostitute and had a stripping business and and look what the Lord's done in me. <laughs> Praise God! My mama led me to the Lord and I got 30 years clean time now thanks to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah! So we want Amen. you to know that no matter what you've done, she she ran with gangsters and and all that <laughs> stuff and been in and out of prison and uh, and, and uh, I was no angel, all right? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I wanted her to give her testimony, but uh, she didn't want to do that. At least I got her on here. Day. But but she told me she you know has been there, done that too. So. We just want to encourage you. They're going to agree with me. Give me your hands, girls. Let's agree in prayer. Amen. If you would like that new life in Christ, that's what we want to do right now. You know, whether you've been in addiction or not, or if you have, you know, there's a new life for you. The Bible talks about being born again. That's in John 3, 3. The Bible says you must be born again. That means where you get the Spirit of God that comes inside of you. And what happens is then you have a relationship with Jesus. And that's why we don't even go back to our old life because we found the love of our life, Jesus, a relationship with him. And we just want to love him and please him. And so if you like that new life, not only just confess, but be willing to repent, which means willing to leave the old life behind. Amen. And if you do, us girls are going to say a prayer right now and lead you in that prayer. So just say this after us. Say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my, my sins. sins. Come into my heart. Come into Come my, into my heart. heart. I want to live for you. I want to live for you. With my whole heart. With my, with whole, my whole heart. heart. I'm, willing I'm willing. I'm willing to leave the old life behind. To leave the old life behind. And live for you, Jesus. And live for you, Jesus. I believe. I believe that you died on the cross. That you died on the cross for my sins. For my sins. And so I confess those sins right now. I confess them now. And thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Forgiving me. Forgiving me. And I'm going to live for you, Jesus. I'm going to live for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. Now my Amen. theme scripture is Psalms 107:2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. He's redeemed Amen. us. Say now so. you go share your testimony. <laughs> yes. Amen. Hi, my name is Jared Flanagan, President and CEO of Teen Challenge Women's Ministries. We have Teen Challenge Women's Ministries that we are the leaders of. And we have centers in Arkansas and Missouri and Tennessee and Mississippi. We feel like addiction is the number one in the arsenal of the enemy against God's children in these last days. And we are on a crusade to fight it. We are absolutely against it. Uh, we know that the hand of God will prevail to anyone that will come to him as a solution. The only requirement to get in, absolute requirement to get in, is a desire to change. Hello, I'm Gary Jennings, founder of the Ark of Praise Church and the Father's House. Uh, Father's House program is a residential home for men and women struggling with life-controlling problems. We call our program a Christian discipleship program. We're very uh, much about Jesus Christ and we feel like he is the solution to helping people heal their hearts and change their lives and restoring families. Hi friends, this is Candy Rose, TV host of Addiction Free. My church, the Ark of Praise, and I would like to introduce our pastor, Gary Jennings. Him and his wife, Danette, are the founders of a recovery home, the Father's House. And we'd like to present his CD, You Chose to Be My Friend. And his friend, Gerald Crabb, produced the CD using his songs. And all proceeds will go to the Father's House. To receive your copy, go to thearkofpraise.org. This is Pastor Tim and my lovely wife, Leslie. 
Uh, we pastor New Life Church, but we also run Project New Start Recovery Homes. Uh, these are homes designed to help men and women overcome addiction, bondages. We deal with any type of bondage that there is. We've been doing this for 20 years. God has just uh, literally changed lives through faith in Jesus Christ. Give us a call at 870-523-8413. God bless. I'm Richie and Carly Willis, and we just want to tell you we both were in major addictions in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We both come out of major, major drugs and major, major addictions. We just want to tell you that today we have men's homes in Hot Springs called Solomon's Porch. There's three homes for men. Uh, we have our own church today, 411 Highland Street, called Highland Street Revival. We have a roofing company today called Willis & Son Roofing. We have crews working for us and people in the office, and we're just thankful. I am Jamie Nash, and this is my beautiful wife, Regina. I was in addiction for over 23 years of my life. In 2005, I went into prison for four and a half years, and while I was in there, I wrote uh, From Meth to Life, One Cell at a Time, and Five Steps to Freedom. If you would be interested in us coming to your church or organization, we'd be more than happy to and let everybody there is let everybody know that there is hope after addiction. I'm Lisa Haynes, Clinical Director for Shalom Recovery Centers. Shalom Recovery Centers is a nine month Christ centered program. We provide services for both men and women, and we seek to serve those looking for help with life controlling issues and addiction. The Harbor Home is really a house of miracles. It is located in a small church in central Arkansas, in Conway, Arkansas, and it's a faith-based program anywhere from six months to one year, uh, residential for women coming out of drug and alcohol addiction. We have women of all ages that come to the Harbor Home and from all over the United States. And it really is a place where people can come, get down to the real root cause of the issue, our first six months is a time of healing, a time of reflection, and really an opportunity for you to come to realize your value and your worth, and uh, really to develop and cultivate a real relationship with Jesus Christ, which we believe is the answer for all addictive behaviors. I need to hear somebody testify. I need to hear somebody say. You were lost and at the bottom And you could not find your way Just when life had lost all meaning And you wish that you could die Jesus came to you that day You invited him to stay I need to hear somebody testify If you confess with your mouth that he is Lord And believe with all your heart that he was raised God made a promise and you can take him at his word You'll be saved, you'll be saved